Hi everybody, welcome to this segment. We're going to be talking about internal recruiting and retention. Internal recruiting and retention are linked very closely together. What we want to do is identify and understand the impacts of internal recruiting sources. So basically, when we're talking about internal recruiting sources, this is our pipeline of employees that we're going to recruit from to have an internal supply of employees. So this is our current employees. We're also going to talk about turnover. So we want to understand the different types of turnover and the impact that turnover has on internal recruiting. So let's begin our discussion by talking about predictors of turnover. When looking at predictors of turnover, looking at the organization, a larger organization is more likely to have a higher turnover rate. The same is true of an organization with a tall structure. Typically, a larger organization has a tall structure. One of the reasons that they do tend to have a higher turnover rate is that the function of recruiting is a less managed process. Let me give you an example of this. A large local organization before they merged, they had a, a large number of positions to fill. The HR group was very overworked trying to fill the large volume of positions. So what they would do is try to shorten the time to hire and an applicant would come in, they have the right KSAs, they would match them up to the job and push them over to the manager. What would happen is that they weren't looking at the O's under KSAOs, so that other group of attributes and personality characteristics that make the person unique as an applicant and matching that up to the team. So perhaps you have a manager who likes to micromanage or the opposite doesn't want to micromanage their employees. You know, if you have an employee who whose preference is to have a lot of autonomy and you match them up with a manager who wants to micromanage their work group, then it's not a good fit. And this is one of the things that Scott and White was seeing is that they were filling so many positions, the volume was so high, and they didn't have enough time to attribute to the group fit or the organizational fit. They were more work worried about the KSAs that their turnover rate ended up being higher because of poor fit. All right, so let's look at the employee. So there are three basic things that will help predict high turnover rates. The first is morale. So we're talking about job satisfaction. And basically job satisfaction is how happy you are with your job. Another one is the job market or the opportunity to leave. So for example, if we have a tight labor market, meaning that the number of individuals in the labor market have high demand KSAs. So there are very few individuals in the, in the labor market that have these KSAs. A good example of this would be when 9-11 happened and there was a need or an increased need for individuals with Homeland Security, some type of Homeland Security degree or experience. And at that time, that wasn't a very prevalent degree. And so after 9-11, that particular KSA became a hot commodity and individuals with those particular qualifications tended to move jobs at that point. Another one is a loose job market. That's not quite the same thing as a tight labor market. A loose job market means that there are a lot of jobs. So it may be that you have a number of people in the labor market who are qualified, but the number of jobs in, in the job market exceed the number of individuals who are qualified. So it makes for a very loose job market. So this would indicate or signal that people are going to start shifting jobs. So a person's commitment or their intention to stay or quit is directly related to loyalty to the organization. So if they were solicited for another job, how likely are they to even listen to the solicitation for another job or just say, no, I'm, I'm happy with my employer, I wanna stay here. Mathis, Jackson, and Valentine state that certain segments of the employee population may have acceptable higher levels of turnover when the value of the employee leaving is approximately the same value as the employee being hired. This is particularly true when there's little or no training required in order to be productive. So when talking about turnover, what do you think? Is turnover bad for the organization? Let me let you think about that for a second. So let me give you an example. There was, uh, at one of the organizations that I worked at, we had a supervisor whose employee turned in his resignation. He had worked for the organization for about 15 years. 
he had been part of a very tight small work group and this individual when he left was very excited about going on to the new new job that he had accepted after he had been gone maybe a month and a half he came back to his supervisor and said hey you know I took this other job I really made a mistake I want to come back but the supervisor decided that he didn't want to hire the employee back the reason that he decided he didn't want to hire the employee back is because this individual tended to have a very negative attitude and he tended to bring the morale of the team as a whole down once he left the team morale increased and productivity increased so he didn't want to hire this individual back so when looking at whether or not turnover was good or bad in that particular situation it was good for the work team to have that person leave so in this particular example the turnover was good for the organization but there are some situations where it's not good for the organization one of those would be to have high performers leave or to have key employees leave those those are certainly bad types of turnover and we'll talk about types of turnover in just a minute in the previous slide I indicated that there might be acceptable levels of turnover one way to determine what an acceptable level of turnover is is to look at industry averages so this information is from the Society for Human Resource Management and they say that the average turnover rate for all industries is 15 percent for service industries it's 35 percent entertainment 27 percent retail 22 percent and healthcare 20 percent so these are some of the higher levels of turnover other types of industries may have lower levels of turnover so obviously if the average is 15 percent these are the groups that have the higher than average so if we were the HR professional in this in an organization in one of these industries we would know that our average turnover rate is going to be higher than say a manufacturing firm or a professional services firm or another type of organization where the average industry turnover rate is much lower than say the service sector while this particular information came from the Society for Human Resource Management another place that you can find information related to turnover rates would be the Bureau of Labor Statistics keep in mind that knowing the average turnover rate for your organization and knowing whether or not it's high or low as compared to your industry can indicate or signal that there may be a problem within your organization so let's talk about the different types of turnover there are six basic types of turnover the first is involuntary turnover so basically that's when an individual is terminated or they're laid off from their position voluntary turnover when they choose to leave the position for example taking another job or choosing to retire functional turnover this means that it was good for the organization like in the previous example that I provided dysfunctional turnover so losing high performers or key employees meaning that if you lose a key employee it may cripple the organization uncontrollable turnover this is turnover that you simply can't control and controllable turnover so this is something that had you as the HR professional been measuring different types of turnover you may have been able to prevent whatever type of turnover that is now each type of turnover isn't necessarily distinctly one or the other it can be more than one for example you can have an individual who leaves the organization voluntarily they happen to be a high performer so it's also dysfunctional and they left because of higher wages or because they didn't like their boss so these may be things that you could have controlled so keep in mind that turnover can have a very complex set of factors that influence it as I mentioned before it's important to measure turnover so we're talking about HR metrics here not only can you measure the different types of turnover for example when a person leaves the organization you can also measure types of turnover by the job or the job level the department the unit the location the reason that they left so you would get this information in the exit interview the length of service so for example people are leaving at three years or five years and so on so you can measure types of turnover in different ways it's important to measure turnover because knowing what's causing the turnover or where the turnover is can help you resolve the problem so for example let's say that we know that at the length of service of say three years three to five years we know the individuals that we have hired that come right out of college 
are going to last about three to five years because our turnover statistics or our metrics have told us that our degreed professionals are leaving us at three to five years. This makes sense. So what if we put together a tuition assistance program? This tuition assistance program will pay for a certain number of classes or credits within a certain period of time with the intention of stretching out the years that this person actually ends up staying to say seven. So we want to extend our timeline or our turnover rate to seven years. It may be that this tuition reimbursement program that we put together has the intention of extending our turnover rate to seven years. This is one of the ways that we can use measuring turnover to impact the organization as a whole. When looking at the cost of turnover, there are different types of cost to turnover. Some of them are more visible than others. When looking at this list, the first four items on this list are related to the budget. So th these are very costly and they're also very visible. The rest of these items on the list all relate to production or production outcomes. So, for example, interview time for the manager, this is impacting production. Training of new employees, well, it may take the employees a while to be trained enough that they are very productive. Low quality products or services, missed deadlines, length of time for employees to reach acceptable productivity levels. These are all types of impacts that turnover has on the work group when you're looking at this part right here, we're looking at productivity of the work group or on the budget itself, looking up here. In this video, we talked briefly about the types of turnover and the impact it has on internal recruiting.